sure you don't want me to wait. Wait now, I'll be fine. Well, then I owe friends. What rock did you crawl out from under, Pettit? Is that any way to uh, talk to uh, an old newspaper man? Quite a place you got here, will you? For a young man who was once a top airline pilot. You come down in the world. I had help from an expert, didn't I? You will, then? I'd hate to think I was responsible for this. Had my way, I would have shut you up for life. That's right, even though I was innocent, huh? Oh, yeah, sure, sure you will. The board of inquiry cleared me. You were drunk, Willie. I don't care what any whitewashing aviation board said. You were drunk because of it, 53 people on your plane Look, died. Had it. You crucified me in your column until I couldn't find a decent job. You kept on hounding me till Henderson, that madman, tried to kill me now. You get out of my life, and you stay out of it. Did I do that? Pettit, get out of here before I forget you're a cripple. I'm not even finding out why I came to see you. You're a sick, rotten, vicious old man, Pettit. You're no. sick to your soul. Oh, yes, Willie, I'm sick. Sicker than you know. Don't give me a very long now. Is that right? Glad to hear it. Now get out. Okay. Your funeral. Yours and your wife's. Just a minute. <laughs> oh, sir. After everything you've done to me, you can threaten my wife and child. I'm here, Willie. I have no can to warn you. Look, Willie. It's a news release I got last week. No, Willie. I had a hard time finding this place. Well, I was afraid I might be too late. What is this? Another example of your depraved mind, Pettit? It's an obituary. Former airline pilot, William Tremaine. His wife and child. I can read it. It's an obituary, my obituary. And it's dated today. Fate, Emerson wrote, is the name for facts not yet passed under the fire of thought and for causes unpenetrated. It's not often that a man gets to read his own obituary. Willie Tremaine has read his twice. The first time was seven years ago when the airliner that he was piloting went down in the Pacific and he was the only survivor. He has just read his obituary a second time. Only, this time it won't be true for a few more hours. Perhaps time, fate, as it does for all men, has finally caught up with Willie Tremaine. Once upon a moonlit night, 3,000 nights ago, Willich Main was behind the controls and 53 passengers died. There were charges, counter charges. The pilot was drunk, they said, conditions unsafe. There were lawsuits, court battles, and millions of dollars changed hands. In time, Willich Main was legally cleared, but he was never forgiven. Not by the newspapers, not by the public. To them, he was always 
a pilot who was drunk and who killed 53 people. Willie claimed innocence and wept at the charges, but they hounded him. Out of the job he loved, out of the life he lived. Hounded him until there was nothing left. But time passed, he met a girl, he began work again. It was over. It was all over. Or so he thought. Until this afternoon, when suddenly it all came back home again. This is your depraved idea of a joke, isn't it, Pettit? I'm a reporter, Willie. I don't make news. I just like to watch it happen. You can say for sure, but you had a pretty good idea. What, Anderson? They released him last month. Released him? Man's insane. He tried to kill me twice. Medical board let him go. Funny the decisions these official boards come to sometimes. Oh, that maniac out. I don't know about you, Willie. I think I'd start to check on my wife and kid. Susan! Susan! Susan!
his belly. Oh, are you looking for them? Of course I am. Have you seen them? No. I'll tell them if I see them. What's the matter with Willie? I don't know. Seems all upset. Says he's looking for Susan and Billy. Well, I'll be. And her always playing so pure and simple. <laughs> Something I can get for you, Willie? Ralph, where's John? Oh, the sheriff's gone. Left this morning, won't be back for a couple of days. I'm in charge until he gets back. Well, I know the law. There ain't nothing he can do for you that I can't do. Ralph, go inside, get on the phone, get the state police down here. You don't mean to help you? No, you can help me that way. Susan and Billy are missing. I can't find them. Did you try the general I, floor? damn it, I have tried everywhere. Now get inside and get on the phone and get the state police down here. I can't. What do you mean you can't? All oh, the outside lines are down. Oh, the local lines, the ones inside the town are working. Willie? Mr. Tremaine, I'll keep an eye out. If I see your wife, I'll sure let you know. Billy, where are you? Billy. Billy. 
If it's you, don't hurt my family. Do what you want with me, but don't hurt them. That is true. I had been drinking. Then what do you want me to do? I'm the one who lived. I got out. I made the mistake. I lived. Now there, that's it. That's what you want, all right? It's my fault. Oh, God. I made the mistake. How do you think I feel? Do you think I've forgotten? Do you think I'm ever going to forget? Please, do what you want with me. But don't hurt my wife and family. Please don't hurt my family. They've had nothing to do with this. Please don't hurt my family. I haven't got them, brother. Anderson? I didn't tell you. The reason the medical board let him go, he was dead. Dead? Died a month ago. But Susan and Billy... Is that you? Where are you? All right. <laughs> yes, of course it's me. And I'm fine, and I'm at home. Well, where else did you think I'd be? And Billy? He's fine, too, darling. Go in bed. Run off to bed. There's a good point. Billy, what's wrong? Thank God. What is it? What's the matter? It's nothing. Nothing that matters now. I'm sorry I left in such a rush today. But after you left this morning, I got a telegram saying Mother was desperately ill. I tried to call, but the lines were all out. Yes, I know. The funny thing was, Mother was fine and she hadn't sent a telegram at all. Someone's idea of a practical joke, I suppose. Susan, I love you. Now, I 
want you to always remember that. I love you. Are you sure you're all right? Yes, yes, I'm fine. I, uh, I, I don't... Look, I've got to run. Billy's stirring. Try and be early. Bye, love. Bye. Willie? Willie? Yes? I almost forgot. It's been on all the news reports this morning. You know that horrible man who hounded you for so long, that reporter? Jack Pettit. Yeah, what about him? It seems he died this morning. He what? That's impossible. No, dear. It was on all the news. He'd been in a coma for two weeks. But, Susan. That can't be. which I have reaped are of the tree I planted. They have torn me and I bleed. I should have known what fruit would spring from such a seed. Once upon a moonlit night, 3,000 nights ago, Willie Tremaine was behind the controls and 53 people died. The price must always be paid and confession, they say, is good for the soul. For Willie Tremaine, it meant another chance to live. So, until we meet again, this is Anthony Quayle, reminding you there is a touch of evil in all of us. Good night. Pleasant dreams. watching a collection of episodes in the Halloween spirit on the wonders of TV land. And what better way to celebrate this holiday than with some pure, unadulterated evil, eh? <laughs> Stay tuned. Another spine-tingling episode of the Evil Touch is coming up next. <laughs>